All right, I am coming to you with a, an actual play of Four Against Darkness, and I mentioned in, I did a recent video on Axbane's Deck of Many Dungeons, and I'll put the link to it right up here. I use this with Microlight 20, and I have a video on that, depending on when you're watching this, either already or soon on the channel. But in that video, I mentioned parenthetically that I think this great deck could be a wonderful thing to use with Four Against Darkness. And I got a surprising number of requests to show how I would do that, and that's what this video is. I'm going to show you my party of four that's already been made. I'm going to talk about a little bit about the structure of what I'm doing. It's really all going to center on a dungeon that I'm creating with this deck of many dungeons, and it's going to be a basic dungeon crawl. I'm starting out with characters of level five, following the rules in one of the four AD books where you can get a random magic item for each character. You give them 100 gold, you give them the appropriate HP, and they are level five. And that's what I've chosen to do. This is going to be my dungeon. I've already constructed it. No, this is not my dungeon. Absolutely wrong. This is going to be my dungeon. It's a small dungeon and it has, I know that the boss monster is in the last room. And I know that in the room before the last room, there's going to be an escalated kind of scenario, a tough room as it were. I've got three quote unquote regular dungeon cards and one entrance card. And if you want to see the basic setup for this game, you can go to the other video where I talk about that. I wanted to do a small ish dungeon because I'm hoping I can get through the whole thing in this video. The difficulty is I'm going to tell you right now that I'm going to be using these cards to create not only just basic dungeon rooms, but to go off of what I find in the card to do investigation, searching, getting treasure, etc. So we might be moving a little more slowly through the dungeon than just with the 4 AD rules. In terms of where I'm getting my stuff, I have a whole bunch of 4 AD material, and you can go to my 4 Against Darkness playlist here if you want to see individual videos on what materials I have. What I've done is to go through everything I've got, and this is my She Who Rolleth the Dice tables. So when rolling for Vermin, Minions, and Weird, I'm going to reference these things here. For wandering monsters that might come up, I'll go to this table. For sort of random treasures I might find in the cards that aren't described by Four Against Darkness, I'll go here. And then I've got some traps and a boss table. So I don't actually know what the boss is. This is a very basic dungeon. We're not even doing any kind of specific quest. We're just going to get through the dungeon and kill the boss. Who are we going to do that with? Well, our party of four starts off with a level five scion. I'm not going to go through everything. <laughs> this is a messy character sheet. The bottom line is the scion is a character that does magic that has to do with manipulating people's minds. And so they are spellcasters that can use that type of manipulation. And they, we will see this in action. Our character has a couple of other things that we bought. Again, we'll get to that as we play. I think that's the easiest way to do it. The We're also going with a level five Luton. This is a kind of a, almost like a fairy-ish type of character. And they are tricky and they sneak around monsters and they try to steal monsters treasure before the party even gets there to fight. And if they're not successful, that is quite risky. We have a level five dark elf, and our dark elf is going to be having a uh, magic flying hammer that uh, she can toss at the outset of combat to do some special damage. She has some spells like a web spell, and she has her basic two-handed weapon that she will utilize after her flying hammer has been tossed. And finally, we have a fighter character. This is a level five moose folk character, and he can start out his combat with a crushing attack with a plus two to use his antlers to, to stun or stagger 
the enemy that gives everybody else a plus one defense for the rest of the round, or he can go right at them with his two-handed club and do some crushing damage. In addition, he can do a level four running save to take wounds from another character. He's got a couple of uh, reroll options with some golden ale, as do some of the other characters. He's got one bandage and some rations that will give him a two and six chance of healing a wound. Other characters have that too. I didn't probably apportion that as I should have. Other characters have more rations, but so be it. So that is our party, and we have them pictured here. This is our uh, Fairy Luton character. This is our Scion, our magical character, and our Elf. I mentioned, I forget to mention that the Elf has a whip for some type of damage, and our Moose Folk fighter. We will be representing them throughout with the various colors and these little tokens that are slightly too big for the cards, but I'm going to get to that and show you as we go. So that's the preamble and tried to make it quick before we get right into the entryway to our dungeon. We're coming right up onto a locked door and the entryways of all of these cards do have some quest ideas. As I said, I'm not, um, I'm really not going to do any quest aside from basically clearing the dungeon of all monsters, nor am I using the materials that I do have in terms of guilds and such. I just want to really showcase the cards a bit as well as the tables that I've used to just really randomize all my material and just throw a bunch of random enemies that may or may not make sense together at my party. Now, I'm going to be loosely using the organization here in terms of positioning my characters, but as you can see, we're not, um, there is an individual movement. These don't correlate to the actual spaces or anything like that. So we won't be, we won't be getting into that, but we will have positioning for this purpose when going through carters and such like that and surprise as well if we get surprised by enemies. So with that said, we are going to come into this entryway here and uh, decide we probably are not going to go right for the lock. We'll probably just go through the open door, why not, and off to the first room of the dungeon, which is a, oh, it is a magic pool. We can roll on this and get a value but uh, we have to get to it. There's a door here. There's some gold here. We're going to do a search and um, go right here. We'll have to come back out because that is a dead end. Okay, we're set up here. And I think the order to go into this room, I want the Luton first because if it turns out there is a hiding monster here, she can attempt to sneak by and grab this treasure, followed by the Moose Folk who's going to come in second to protect and per the rules in a corridor so in this area here he takes up both spots so we've got it lined up like this and then we have our elf and our scion in the back the elf does have potential for a ranged attack so this is how we're going to go in the first thing we're going to do and these are some of my own procedures here for going through the dungeon is that when we come to a door that is not necessarily indicated as locked, we are going to do a roll to see whether it has to be trapped or not. And I've decided that it will be trapped on a, an unlocked door will be trapped on a one, as opposed to a locked door would be trapped on a one to two. So it's not, um, it's not trapped. So we can just proceed into the room and for an empty room, we're going to see if there is a monster in here. That's going to be a one to two chance of a monster being in there. There is no monster in here. So we're all going to enter into this space. And now what we can do is we can attempt to take this uh, loot. And we're going to look here at the card and see the first thing we, we can just approach this magic pool. And it's a D12 roll to see what is in here. So we will make that roll. And we got a three, so nothing. Um, it says there's no noticeable effect the GM decides, but as the GM here, I'm going to decide there is nothing here. So, but we're going to get a chance to search and 
for the searching of the barrels here, we will go with the search role of the game, which is a d6 roll to see what we get. And we rolled a six. So there is going to be a treasure here, but it's a hidden treasure. So we need to roll on the hidden treasure impact table from the main rule to see before we can see what this treasure is. We're going to do that. So basically, this is like a hidden treasure complication table on a one to two we're going to set off an alarm attracting a wandering monster and we do so before we can before we can get into to this or investigate maybe pick up these weapons or whatever uh, we have attracted a wandering monster and so we are going to remember our order here although we're in a room so i guess it doesn't know you know we're in a room so it doesn't really matter we're going to be surprised it's a wandering monster. So for wandering monster, we're going to roll on my own table here and see where it comes from. And we will go to that. So it's referencing us to Tales from the Adventurers Guild, page 34. And we're not going to get away so quickly. Ooh, there's riffraff here in this dungeon. And this is a D10 table, in fact. So let's find a D10. And what is there? Ooh, it's a one. Select a random character, a personal enemy, love rival, church or guild rival, etc. Come up with some interesting story of that character confronts the party. The foe is a boss, ugh, one level lower than the hero. Three life accompanied by D3 level two scoundrels, minions. They carry, okay, blah, blah, blah. They must be fought if the boss is killed. That character may disregard this result if it comes again. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to do it. We're going to select a random character. One, two, three, four. And I didn't think I'd need a D4. So, all right. Here's a D4. It's a little hard to see on video, but I can't find anything better right now. So, one, two, three, four. So, a blast from the past is coming for the elf. All right. So, we're going to have some combat here. And I built my, I built my uh, boss elf guy with a whole bunch of spells that I think are just kind of the nasty ones. And I chose some druid spells as well as a healing surge. And as an elf, he gets plus level attack and spell casting. He has his HP. He's also got a bow. And the first thing we need to do is see how many little scoundrels he has with him. And basically these are going to be pretty easy to eliminate, but we do need to, we do need to figure it out. Uh, this is D3 here. Whoops. You didn't see that rolled off camera. So he's got two D3 minions or two level two scoundrels with him. Those are minions. And, um, he has surprised us. So we're going to, he's going to be represented by this cube here. And we only need two of these for the scoundrels. It's getting a little crowded in this room here. And the first thing we're going to do is he is going to, I think he's going to, um, I think he's going to, he's going to, uh, he's going to, he's going to do a, um, he's just going to start out with a, now he's going to do, he's going to give himself some defense. I think that's what he's going to start out doing to cast the bark skin spell. So he's going to um, do a, he's going to do, he's going to roll plus his level for the, with the spell. And um, we're looking here for a level five so he rolled a five so he's got he's now got a plus two defense so he chose to do that before attacking just to kind of like enwrap himself in this bark skin and um now we're gonna we're gonna get to um we're gonna get to attack him and uh i think i've numbered my characters here let's give a better view of everybody we're gonna start with our I think we're going to come out fighting strong with our moose folk here. He's going to charge using his plus two, uh, plus two antlers. He's got crushing damage plus two, and he will charge ahead to see what he can, what kind of damage he can do. He rolls a three plus two plus his level. So that's C. 
3 plus 2 is 5, plus 5, that's 10. We got 10 minus the 2 defense that the elf now has. That's going to be an 8. And um, he's a level 4, so we got 2 wounds by charging at this elf by the moose folks. So the moose folks had a successful turn there. And now the, I think next up is going to be our little Luton here. She has a, she's got a plus two attack. Right now she has this little mini dagger that is, that was her magic weapon. And even though it's a light slashing because it's magic, it doesn't, have a negative benefit. So she's got a plus two on that. So she's going to sort of like fly around. Now she also has a, I think she's just going to attempt a attack here. And so she's got um, plus two on that. Whoops. Plus two on that. And she's rolling, can't hard to get this all in four. So that's going to be a six and that does beat the level four so that's going to do one wound and so we're down to five hp for our elf and now we're going to come to our dark elf here who also has some spells i think he's gonna he could entangle a boss uh, I think he's going to do that. So then everybody's going to get a plus two. He's going to try to cast a web. Uh, he's going to try to do a web spell. So for that, he'll add his level and his level is a five. So we're going to try to uh, cast a web spell. It's probably a good chance of four plus five. Yes, he does. So what this means is we have entrapped this elf and everybody else is going to get a plus one to their attack. So that is that is pretty good. So we now have a web around this guy. And finally, the scion here. And the scion, what can they do? They've got, uh, they've got this sword of justice right here. And um, I think they're going to roll that. It's going to also be a plus two attack. We don't get to add our level, just a plus two. So they're going to do that. And um, let's see what we get here. Oh, that's a fail. So that is a fail. And in fact, that is a very bad fail. So we, so that was, that was a fail. So the elf is coming back at us now. And first of all, he's got, he's down to five HP, but he could do, he does have the healing surge, but I think what he's going to do now is, I think he's going to cast bear form. Bear form could fight like a level four warrior and has eight HP and whatever damage it takes, it can only, uh, it once it dies, only half of that goes to our elf. So he's going to attempt to cast bear form and he will add his level four to the spell casting roll. And we're trying to get to five. Ooh, he rolled a one. That is a fail. So that was a wasted turn on his part. And that could really, that could really turn this combat against. So I got way in over my head there with that video on using playing this all out because there's just so much on each card that the it was like one room took as you saw almost 20 minutes so i think that was enough hopefully to give you a sense of how this could be used so effectively with 4ad and here's just like an example of another random card that would give you its own table of monsters that you could use and then you could go in search of the stats for those in your own 4AD materials, or you could generate them on the fly if you wanted to do that. The uh, additional art here on a card could be used to, say, enhance a search or make a search harder or give you an extra search or really whatever you wanted to. You could turn this into a trap or something that needed to be gotten through by some magical means or whatever. It's just, there's enough suggestion here. And as I said, as I've said in other videos about these cards, the addition of just the really compelling yet simple art 
is just adds quite a bit and you can just build your dungeon that way and send your characters through it and have something to do to create a dungeon crawl adventure that has has a limit and has a quest and a focus and can even ratchet up in difficulty as you as you wish and by pulling in the king card as the last card you will get to a quest goal card and you can work with the cards in that manner the other thing that this deck allows for is or any type of really randomized dungeon crawl that you might do but using this deck allows for is to create a table such as i've done here where you can just play out the things that you might want to encounter in a situation and then pull them in from all the books that you have to make sure you're using all the materials that you have because like many i suppose with four against darkness part of what gets me uh, both excited about the game but sometimes feels overwhelming is the fact that i have at this point just so many books that when i sit down and decide i want to play it it can be overwhelming as to what i want to do and doing something like this this was for a specific dungeon so i just dealt with traps and a boss and some random treasures very basic but you could create this for an outside environment you could even do something i haven't done this yet but this is my this is what i would plan to do which would be to do a wilderness kind of hex crawl for a certain amount of turns and then get to a dungeon in that go through the dungeon get something in the dungeon and then come back and sort of combine a the wilderness with the dungeon crawling that way because i do have enough supporting materials to make that possible with the four against darkness stuff i have so that's just a brief look again inside these wonderful deck box dungeon no deck <laughs> deck of many dungeons cards deck box dungeon is something else deck of many dungeons cards from Axbane and how it can be really effective in creating a, I hesitate to use the word cute, but pleasing to look at dungeon space that on each card you can have tons to investigate, things to get, secret doors to find, and of course, monsters to fight and treasures to behold.